This math cast is based off 8th and 10th grade geometry on congruence, proof, and constructions. Some vocabulary you'll be hearing in this math cast is congruence, which is when two or more things are equal. It could be length, size, or even angles. You'll also be hearing proof. Proof in geometry is using logical explanations, using definitions, and proven theorems to explain your work. You'll also hear constructions, which are made by using a straight edge, compass, or protractor to draw a shape, line, or angle. You will also be hearing the word point. The points are exact locations labeled throughout a construction, so you're not confused when given instructions. They could be labeled A, B, C, any letter of the alphabet. A bisector is something that cuts your construction, whether it be an angle or a segment, whatever you're working on, into two equal parts. To begin learning about congruence, you must remember they are equal. So we will be drawing an isosceles triangle. And in the isosceles triangle, you have two congruent sides with each opposite angle of those sides are also congruent because the sides are congruent. So I first drew a line. So now I will just duplicate it. We now have an isosceles triangle with these two sides congruent and their opposite angles congruent. So both these two sides are congruent and both these two angles are congruent. The isosceles triangle theorem states that if two angles are congruent, then their opposite sides are congruent, and if two sides are congruent, then their opposite angles are congruent. So with this triangle, if you wanted to show congruence, you could label these points A, B, and C, and then to show the congruent sides, you would do segment AB is congruent to segment AC. The congruent symbol is basically just an equal sign with a squiggly line over top. And since you know those segments are equal, you, and you already know the angles opposite those segments are equal, or congruent, you could do angle A, C, B is congruent to angle A, B, C. Now not only did you learn about congruence in this slide, but you also learned how to use proof. We used proof by stating the isosceles theorem as a logical explanation as to why those segments and those angles are congruent. So on this slide, you will be learning how to make an angle bisector, which remember is cutting an angle into two equal parts. So in this construction, we want to make an angle bisector of angle ABC. Now to do this, you would first place your compass on the vertex of the angle, which is at point B because that is where the two lines intersect to create the angle. You then create an arc from the vertex and label the points where they intersect the two lines of the angle X and Y. Then, placing your compass on point X, you create an arc on the interior of the angle. Then, place your compass on point Y and do the same thing, making your arc intersect with the arc that you already created from point X. 
You then label this point of the intersection point Z. After you've created point Z, you can then make your angle bisector. You just draw a straight line with a straight edge from point B intersecting through point Z. Make sure when you make your two small arcs from points X and Y that you keep the radius the same on your compass or else this will not work. Now if you follow the instructions, even though I wasn't able to use a compass for this video, when you do it on paper using a compass and a straight edge, it should work for you. The next construction I'm going to show you how to do is creating parallel lines and rhombuses. Now if you don't know about rhombuses, you might be thinking what do they have to do with parallel lines? Well, in a rhombus, there are two sets of parallel lines. All sides of a rhombus are congruent, but the opposite sides are parallel. Also, because opposite sides are congruent, that means the opposite angles are also congruent in a rhombus. In this construction I'm going to show you, I find this the easiest way to make parallel lines. And it's also helpful because in this way of doing it, you can create a rhombus. Now to start this way of drawing parallel lines, you first need to take a straight edge and just draw a line. You then make a point above that line or below, it doesn't really matter. And I will label mine point A. Then from point A, you label the points where it intersects the line, point B and point C. Then, keeping the radius the same that you use to make your circle from point A, you create an arc through the line from point B. And label that point D. Then from point D, again keeping the same radius that you've been using the whole time because, like we said, all sides of a rhombus are congruent, so we have to keep the radius the same. We make an arc from point D through your original circle. Now, I know I'm not using a compass, so it's not perfect, but if you were, then it should work out and all the sides would be congruent. And now you have that point from the arc in your original circle intersecting. You can label that point E. All that's left to do after is connect all of the points. Like I said, nowhere near perfect without using a compass, so make sure you use your compass. And if you do, your rhombus and your parallel lines will come out. So in this, you can see segments BC and AE are parallel, which if you were going for just the parallel lines, that's all you would need. You wouldn't need to draw the extra lines of E to D and A to B.